ran my own local digital video firm, and I worked with many of the companies that would be assisted here, manufacturing, tech, and biotech. And over the years, I saw every one of my clients leave for states that assisted them with the second stage loan program. They moved out one by one. I must say Massachusetts got quite a few, and so did North Carolina. So it's time that the Commonwealth remains or becomes competitive when it comes to helping these businesses. Once again, these are the businesses that your children and grandchildren want to work in. Tech, biotech, and manufacturing. They cover all different areas in the Commonwealth. I guess I could say shame on us for not doing a better job at marketing a program like this, but it's an exceptional program. And this bill, has been moving since 2016. It moved out of commerce the two times that I introduced it unanimously, actually three times. It's now three times that it unanimously moved out of the Commerce Committee. So I just want to reiterate that the goal of this program is to assist early and mid-stage businesses to meet working capital needs during the early years because lack of bank history, banks might be reluctant to extend lines of credit or working capital. We are helping them stay here so they can employ our future leaders of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Chair recognizes the leader, Representative Cutler. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I agree with the goal stated by the prime sponsor of the bill. Yes, we should make it easier to do business here in the Commonwealth. I think we could do that through other mechanisms, though, than asking taxpayers to bear the risk of these loans in this current program. We could make it easier to get permits. We could improve our tax structure. We could improve our talent pool by investing in our trades and other jobs. But particularly in these uncertain economic times because of some of the financial policies that have been foisted upon us by the federal government in terms of the credit markets and the outcomes that have occurred there. Yes, credit is tight. I do agree with the prime sponsor on that, but that is because of bad policies. And during a potential economic downturn, I don't know that it's fair to ask the taxpayers to back the loans that, are, that would be included in this program. So I think that the good gentleman who's offering the amendment has a good goal. Let's phase this program out and actually do things that work. Representative Shuren offers amendment A00562. Will the House agree to the amendment? On that question, Chair recognizes Representative Shuren. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This amendment removes the language in the bill that the Commonwealth Financing Authority will determine the maximum guarantee amounts and percentages for the loans. The amendment will revert to the current law. The current law states that a guarantee not exceed 50% of the outstanding principal amount of the loan during the first two years of the term of the loan and no more than 25% of the outstanding principal amount from the end of the two years to the end of the seven-year loan term. I do not think it is in the taxpayer's best interest to leave the decision up to the Commonwealth Financing Authority to set the terms for the guarantee amounts and percentages of the loans. This is taxpayer money, and we should be prudent on how it is spent. The terms should be set in statute. So there is no question on how the terms are set. In addition, lending institutions and businesses should know the terms of the loan from the time of application. I urge a yes bet vote to this amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Chair, thanks the gentlelady. On that question, Chair recognizes the maker of the bill, Representative Schusterman. I urge a no vote. Let's be competitive, Pennsylvania. Let's bring those biotechs manufacturing companies and tech companies and nurture them so they grow and they stay right here in PA. Thank you. I think that the good representative has a good proposal here in this amendment. She is correct when we should have some level of predictability in a program that is run by the government. For too many times, that has been exactly what I have heard 
people complain about. So when you look at this program, I agree with the prime sponsor that we should be competitive, but again, there are other mechanisms that we can utilize to do that. We should be reforming our permitting process. We should be reforming our educational system to produce the kinds of workers that we need, and we need to stop using government money to paper over other fundamental problems here in our economy. So I would support the good lady's amendment. I urge a yes vote.